Hi everyone, it's Karen here with 20 art hacks on how to use food in your work. Enjoy! The first hack I want to talk about is tea. And tea is really easy to use in your artwork because you can use it as we used to do in elementary school and stain things using it. Uh, I took some old tea bags and steeped them and made a really strong and thick concoction of the tea so it will really give good stains and you can do so many different things from using the inside of the tea leaves to actually using the tea bags themselves so besides using the tea for staining paper you can also take out the inside of the tea and mix it with any type of medium say it's a soft matte gel like I'm doing here or some paste and then you can apply it to the background and it will create a really nice texture and it will also have a tea stain to it once it dries clear it will only be kind of a tea stain on it and it will have a little bit of texture from the leaves because it has the gel it doesn't uh, get ruined and you can really preserve what's in there you can also use the tea with a paintbrush uh, to just paint a piece of paper and stain it that way so that's a really good use of it as well Lastly, you can take the tea and use and make it into an old book paper by just uh, staining it and even wrinkling it and you will really be able to create that really nice old paper kind of look. So here are the different pieces that I did. I, you can, I used the paper and stained it and I used the old book paper and also um, you can see what I did with the gel. Here you can see how Louise Nelson use tea bags to create different type of artwork she made her own bowl out of tea bags or created art on it stapled it stamped it and made really beautiful things with it she even painted it and created these really cute characters on it so it just really so many ideas you can do you can use with gesso and here she is cutting it out and there's a whole technique on how she's making tags using it and adding mediums on it and stamping on it and you can visit her blog to check this out the next art hack is coffee and I didn't want to use actual coffee from a tin because I don't want to waste it but the residue of coffee it would be great so this is from my machine I'm just emptying out the pot or you could go to your local coffee shop and ask them for some espresso ground coffee and use the leftovers it's a great way of recycling and using it and you can mix it with so many things so of course you can use it like I did before with the gel but in this case I'm mixing it with the paste I really want to show that these products can be mixed with anything and the nice thing about them is when you're mixing it with these mediums they preserve better because there's they're preserved inside the paste so here I am I took one of the other crafters workshop workshop stencils and I just basically put it on top and it created this beautiful brown texture with the paste the next one is seeds and I use old seeds that I had uh, cumin seeds and other seeds basil seeds and I mix them one with clear gesso and one with white gesso and just to show you the texture and these are old stuff if you have in your cupboard that you forgot about them over the years you could just take them and instead of throwing them out you could use them in your artwork so here is one of them and this is with the clear gesso and then I'm gonna mix the black ones with the white gesso because I really want that black color to kind of stick through the white and it will look it looks really really cool and you can mix these with gel with paste anything you want and you create your own kind of paste and they preserve inside because the mediums really hold everything together of course once the texture is dry you can color these or cover them and create your own art with it Another way to make texture is to use eggshells and I took eggshells and basically cracked them using a little hammer inside a Ziploc bag. One mistake that I did make and just make sure you take the membrane off inside and I didn't do that. That was a big mistake and later on every time I took a piece I had to remove the membrane itself. So first remove the membrane and then crack it. That's the tip that I give you. Then I took some soft matte gel. I pressed it onto my little piece of cardstock it's actually watercolor paper and then I started taking the eggshell and creating a mosaic on top and this was it's a really good way of doing texture it's not my idea I've seen it done online and I really thought it would be a great way to use food waste 
so you can recycle this is all like a recyclable kind of video where you can use food to create texture of course there are ideas of food that are not recyclable but I don't like using those type of food because I really feel bad because there's so many people starving in the world so unless it's something that is old and recyclable I try not to but I am going to give you the ideas because I've seen things online where people use different type of food to create beautiful texture for art so I mean because art is food to the soul so basically I guess it's it's kind of like you can use it for both ways but I do like using leftover things and this was perfect so as you can see I'm removing the membrane out of it which I should have done originally and I'm just being this really nice collage Once I finished gluing all the eggshell pieces and creating kind of a mosaic in the background, I took some of the gel and sealed all the pieces into the gel to make sure that they don't rot. That way a gel is a great way of keeping something from going bad. So I just took a lot of gel and sealed it and then let it sit and dry overnight to make sure that everything has to be fully dry to add another layer. Just to show you an idea of what you can do, you can grab a bit of black gesso and cover the eggshells once they're dry with the black gesso and just give it a good coat. You don't have to go very thorough, but you can give it two coats if you want to, but a black gesso covers it really well. And once that's dry, I applied wax, metallic wax from Prima Fina Bear, but you can also add metallic paint or anything like that to just uh, bring out the highlight. You can add any, any type of paint and use a dry brush technique or you can use wax like I'm doing right now and it brings out that beautiful texture from the eggshells to the surface and you can use this to do an ATC or even for a card or anything you want it's a great way of doing a mosaic style texture continuing along with shells I thought to use nut or seed shells this actually is a container and it, I bought it in the store but it uses walnut shells and then uh, my friend Didi also thought to use like peanut shells, so that would look really cool. And here I am using some seeds. These are um, sunflower seeds, and I ate the inside, and I just used the shells to kind of create texture. The same as in the other one, you could do the same technique. I'm just gluing them with the gel, and then of course you can color it in with black gesso, white gesso, whatever you want, and create this really cool texture. So if you love nuts, then you could use like peanut shells or walnut, pistachio. I mean, you can crush them. You can make like a thing out of it. As long as you mix them with gel, you're fine and then they will keep perfectly. If you mix them and crush them with some gel or some paste, you can create a really amazing texture paste that would look so good. Now they're dry and I am just adding some white gesso this time. You could still add the black gesso like I did before with the eggshells but I just wanted to try a different technique. So I'm adding white gesso and I did add quite a few layers, maybe two or three layers just to make sure that it covers it. You don't have to do that. And now I'm adding watercolors. I want to show you how amazing this texture is going to look. So I just took my watercolor confections from Prima and just with a paintbrush just some, adding some color. First I sprayed the background with a little bit of water and just helping the watercolor spread. Look at the amazing texture that it created. So it's really amazing. Like I mean these are just sunflower seeds but imagine what you can do with any other type of seed shells or nut shells. The other idea is cinnamon sticks. Some people use them for their coffee or you get them with a dessert and you could just keep those. They look like twigs and they're perfect for including in your mixed media as well. The next idea is with salt and I've used this a lot in my projects. I took a watercolor paper and some watercolors and just adding it to the background, just wetting the paper really well with the colors so we could create that really nice effect with the salt. Then I took some kosher salt. It's a really coarse salt and you can also use Epsom salts for it. but. I, what I had was just this really coarse salt and all you do is you sprinkle a little bit of the salt on the background to make it um, 
kind of absorb everything so you create you sprinkle a little bit and then just let it dry naturally you could heat set it and that would work as well but I just let it dry and once it was dry I just used a credit an old credit card and just pushed it off and look at the amazing texture that it creates with the watercolors if you don't want to use your salt from the kitchen then you can use Epsom salts or any other type of coarse salt to do this technique here are a couple of projects that I created with this technique and I also have a project by my friend Milagros Rivera who also used this technique for her project with this lady. Another way of doing this technique is using rice and it's exactly the same way. You just add the watercolor and then sprinkle rice. I don't really like using rice because it's just a food that we can eat but I just took a little bit of it just to show you as an example that you can also create this because of the rice as absorbs the actual water color as well. I mean the water and retains the water which really helps with this technique but I don't as I said I don't really like using rice because it's something that we can actually eat another idea with the rice is I've seen it done where people write your name on the rice and then put it in and make it into a necklace it makes a really nice piece of jewelry and here I am removing it and it, it created a similar texture to the salt the next art hack is using vegetables, but not specifically vegetables, something my idea like potato stamping that we used to do in kindergarten, or like the idea that Birgit Kupsen did here, which she jelly printed with the ends of vegetables. And look at the beautiful prints that she created, just using the end of a celery or you know anything that is a little bit softer that you're not gonna use anymore. You can take and create these really cool designs using vegetables. She has a video how she created this and you can watch it in the link below. Along the same lines, you have Caroline Doobie who also created jelly printing using seed pods. So that's another great idea and her video is below as well. The next idea is using a shank bone and Louise Nelson is like just an amazing artist and she created these two pieces using a piece of bone and how cool is that i would have never thought of that the next two examples are skittles and pomegranate juice or pomegranate and i've seen many videos online regarding this but i don't have any examples specifically i also have coconut husks where Didi Catron designed two beautiful projects with them and you can see the husks how an amazing texture they give to the project she also used lemon to age something and stain it and she used the lemon grind and grind some of it and actually buried this and is going to open it in January and see how it eroded everything. So lemon is a great thing to kind of erode things and make things look very old. Another art hack is making your own paste on modeling paste or texture paste. Gabby Polico, who is one of my friends, created her own texture paste using baking soda. Here is the recipe. And she also used cornstarch to create a very smooth paste, which is amazing as well. You can create it at home, and here is the recipe for that one as well. So you don't have to buy expensive things, you can use things from the house to create these. The links to both these recipes on Gabrielle Polico's site are listed below in the description area as well. Other ideas are using candy or pasta. Have you ever seen macaroni necklaces that kids make or beans? I've seen really nice work made with beans or spices, but I really don't like using these unless I have to because they are real food and there's so many people starving in the world that I really don't want to use those for things, but it's a really good ideas as well. Thank you so much for watching. For more inspiration, subscribe to my channel or visit me on my website. Bye!